Everyone has been on my case about Sala. Everyone who cares, which is like maybe 50 people, uh, have asked me to do a recipe video for this. And I don't blame them because Sala is heaven's food. It is the best thing that I have personally ever tasted. And instead of eating a bunch of candy as a kid, I would eat Sala. What is Sala? Sala is pork fat cured, usually at home if you're poor and slav. And it's, you know, sometimes it comes like it's literally just the fat from the belly, but you can also do the uh, whole pork belly, which has the strips of meat through it. I personally like that kind. And I just, I had the craziest cravings for it when I was pregnant with my son and I would eat it every single day. And guess what? I didn't gain any weight. Um, obviously I gained the weight of my baby and all the stuff, but I personally did not put on any pounds. Hmm. It's almost like fat doesn't make you fat. My sister and I have this memory of uh, when we first moved to Canada, we didn't have Sala. My dad wasn't making it. So we would just eat raw bacon. Uh, I know that freaks some people out, but we would just sit there and eat packs of raw bacon because it was the closest thing we could find to Sala. Before we begin, I would like to point out we are curing meat at home. If that makes you nervous, if, if my utterance of that makes you nervous, do your own research. I'm not responsible for your health. If you have a weak stomach or you do it wrong or you don't cure the pork belly properly, that's on you. I'm not recommending this to anybody. I'm just showing you how I like to do it and then I will show you how I like to eat it. Let's start making our sala. It's really easy. You need pork belly, you need pickling spice, fresh garlic, salt, a container, a knife, a fridge and a freezer. Very simple. All right, let's do it. Here are some of the ingredients at glance. This is my pickling spice blend, my black peppercorns. This is my pork. Uh, as you can see, even though it's from a specialty bougie market, it's still pretty cheap. Now, uh, we're also going to need a container and some fresh garlic. You need 16 pieces. If you don't have 16 pieces exactly, you will fail at your sala. Also make sure it's in a moomin bowl. Although in this video, my pork belly does not have skin on it, I suggest you try and find a butcher or a store that carries pork with skin on it because this does enhance the flavor. Unfortunately, it's hard to find. Even the ethnic stores don't have it a lot of the time. Um, I went to a very Mexican HEB and even they were taking the skin off. Very disappointing. So hopefully you have more luck. Usually Ukrainian or Russian stores will keep the skin on. Pour your pickling spice into a container. Again, you can buy a ready-made pickling spice. That's fine. You can make your own. That's also good. It really just depends on your taste. I will post in the description the combination of spices that I like to use. Please listen carefully. Do not use table salt or any other kind of fine-grained salt. Use a large grain sea salt and use the non-iodized kind because the iodine can affect the flavor. Also the blue scoop measures at about half a tablespoon. So uh, we used two and a half tablespoons for two and a half pounds of pork. Very easy. You can actually use more salt. It's not going to affect much because the pork will not absorb more salt than its capacity. One of my greatest joys in life is crushing garlic. So please enjoy this sequence while I rattle off some pork facts. Pork has more protein than chicken and is high in zinc, iron, and B vitamins. Every summer I would stay at my grandma's farm in Russia and the kids would ride pigs as a pastime. Now pigs aren't dumb submissive animals like horses are, so I don't recommend trying to ride them. It takes generations to turn a wild boar into a hairless farm pig, but if a hairless farm pig escapes into the wild, it only takes two weeks for it to turn back into a wild boar, including growing tusks. Pork has been cured, pickled, brined, and smoked all over the world, dating at least as far back as ancient China in 8000 BC. Those cultures seem to have known something intuitive about pork, which led them to cure it. Or it's a coincidence because curing obviously keeps the meat longer. Because today we have seen some studies 
that provide a link between the curing of pork, whether it's with vinegar or salt, that actually helps the human body with um, reacting to the meat in a more uh, digestible and less toxic way. Uh, one study I will link below, which shows that cured pork versus uncured pork, and just like if it's just cooked on a fire, um, reduces the amount of coagulation and blood immediately after it being consumed. So check that out in the links below. Let me know what you think. I don't know what it actually means, but that is an interesting reaction to uncured pork. Neatly stack your pork on top of each other. Uh, make sure it's quite tight and that way it will cure and um, get all flavorful throughout. And then you wanna put it in the fridge for three to four days before you put it in the freezer. The sala has been in the fridge for three days. So let's give it a taste and throw it in the freezer. The reason we freeze it is for longevity. Obviously we made a bunch of meat and also for sliceability. That's the sala. Smells done, okay. Also when it's frozen, it just melts on your tongue so nicely. Okay, that's what it looks like. Okay. Oh my God, raw pork. Hmm. Yep. I'm salted through. What you're looking for is like, has the sal absorbed the salt and cured itself? I'm gonna say yes. Um, that can go in the freezer. Awesome. Now, obviously it's covered with like a lot of spices on the outside. So like if that bothers you, you just shake them off, right? And when it's frozen, it'll fall off easier. But yeah, so just do this or you can just chew it up and enjoy more flavor. I love it, so good. Okay, stay healthy, stay slab.